if you just pack up your bike and go. first bit's always the most exciting and then once you get underway you develop a momentum. It was great starting out in Beijing. There is an element of not knowing at all what, what's going to come and what to expect. Before coming to Beijing and even in Beijing I still I was, uh, I would say, nervous. Getting those first few days of riding under your belt and get just getting comfortable that you're, yes, we're into this journey and it's happening and, and you let all those worries from home let, let go. Mongolia, the first part, and it was cold, it was wet, it was raining. Foggy, raining, cold, and you just have to cycle. From Ulaanbaatar, the, the roads just deteriorated. In fact, many of them weren't even roads, that they were simply tracks that had been worn by numerous vehicles that were all heading in the same direction. The terrain was hard dirt, gravel, sand, lots of sand, which was impossible to cycle through. Riding was a crazy combination of trying to stay upright, trying to stay moving, and then trying to find that line that was smoothest. I pushed my bike a lot. Probably the thing about the scenery of Mongolia that struck me most was the vastness of it. There was just nothing. It was just a plane that went on and on and on. It was quite, quite mind-blowing in its scale. We would um, have a camp. Within minutes, some guy would ride up on horseback, uh, and it was like, where do these people all come from?
some of the psychologically hardest days I've had on the trip were in Mongolia because it just never seemed to end. Wow, that's some climb. I would say that uh, it was uh, maybe one of the highlights of this trip so far, getting to Russia. We were in Siberia, hey? so the word is, may sound scary, but uh, when we got to Siberia, I felt like home. <laughs> I had no idea what Russia was going to be like. To me, it was exactly like being at home in British Columbia. That move from, from gravel to pavement was, was quite amazing. Once we got into Kazakhstan, we were back on the, the step similar to what we'd had in Mongolia. And it went on and on and on in Kazakhstan. There were some long days, some very, very long days. Getting to El Mahdi was like getting home. It, it, it felt very European. Lots of museums, galleries, restaurants. It was great. Moving from Kazakhstan into Kazakhstan was another one of those changes from plains into quite spectacular scenery. For me, Kazakhstan was one of the most beautiful stretches. What I enjoyed most was the dirt switchback climbs. Although they were pretty gruelling, it was completely worth it for the views. So I believe it's sort of coined the jewel of Central Asia and you know for good reason it's an amazing place Kyrgyzstan, was, it's a, a wonderful country. Well, I was riding and I'd look over and there'd be a uh, half a dozen wild horses trotting along beside me. One day we're cycling and you're looking at the horizon thinking, is that clouds or is it mountains?
from Kyrgyzstan, we moved into Tajikistan. And Tajikistan, for this trip, has one of the big highlights. Amir Highway, it's a very remote part of Tajikistan, which is really difficult to cycle. It's one of the harder sections of the ride because we're up at altitude. We're sitting at just over 4,200 meters. There's something I really loved about being high up in the mountain. There are some difficulties. Mostly people face to the high altitude sicknesses. Sometimes it threatens even life. The, the scenery just captivates you, um, and so you tend to focus much more on, on that. You cycle along the Panj River, and you're in this vast canyon. Just on the other side is Afghanistan. And it was a river you could basically you could throw a rock across to the other side. If you wanted to, if you could communicate with the people, you could you could yell across at people or wave. You could see how people were living on the Afghan side. See these villages, you can see people in their homes and their gardens. The joy of traveling like this is that you can access those remote places. first considered doing this trip, I wasn't sure whether Salman Khan and Bukhara actually existed and were cities today or whether there are some mythical places that came out of the uh, Thousand and One Nights. And a, I can tell you they do exist, they're spectacular. We'd spent the last couple of months appreciating natural beauty. That was the first time we really had contact with the historical side of the Silk Road. The only way I can describe Turkmenistan is, is, is a bloody hot furnace. For some of us that are, are not used to heat, it was uh, very, very difficult. And that's getting into the uh, stupid hot category. Iran is not as it's portrayed in the West. Iran is a, a very friendly, wonderful country. I've read lots of accounts of cyclists in Iran and they say it's the most friendly country in the world, and it is. People are hospitable, they want you to stop, they want to give you things. That's the Iran that I met, uh, not the Iran that's um, portrayed as evil in the West.
I've found is hospitality, generosity and just nice people in general. It's a very beautiful place. It's a place where you could spend months exploring quite easily and happily. Turkey's been gorgeous, and the countryside is fascinating. Some of the towns were in what you think it belongs in the European Alps somewhere. The Turkish culture wasn't what I expected. The people were friendly, they were curious, they're lively, the food is great. Because you're moving much more slowly through the countryside than you would if you were in a vehicle or on a train or whatever, you definitely get a much greater sense of, of what the country is like. Yes, I wake up every morning with the question, what am I going to discover today? There's always something new every day, and that's my main motivation for getting on the bike.